Good morning, Black women and supporters of Black women and friends worldwide. I want my listeners to understand something. Some of you are waking up to the news that Jonathan Majors, one of your faves, has been arrested for assault. I see some people upset in our community, black men and black women, some already coming to his defense. A lot of black women not shocked. Some of them wish it wasn't true. Just a few days ago, millions of black women by number of tweets and likes on said tweets, literally millions of black women were thirsting over Jonathan Majors in a way that no other race of woman was thirsting over him. He did not have crossover appeal. His physical appearance, what flies in the black community sometimes is not crossover to other communities. Some of you black women believe it's crossover because you, some of you black women believe that Jonathan Majors had crossover appeal because so many of our black men have dated interracially and have had more access to interracial dating than we had as black women. A lot of that is just male privilege, to be honest. Um, There's nothing wrong with having African features. Nothing wrong at all. But, um, you know, it's it's subjective based on how those features sit on the face, etc. Does he know how to smile? Things of that nature. And, um, you know, only black women have have beat up Jonathan Majors' looks for the most part. And a lot of black women didn't like his looks at all. They said he looked a little bit too hard. Not every African tribe is is deemed attractive to the broader African society. And that's what I want African-American women to understand. Um, You do not have to have blind loyalty to every black talented man. Um, I want you to pay a little bit more attention to even the black community online, on Twitter, and not just the broader black community, which really centers male voices. Go into the black women's only spaces, black women's empowerment, um, divest black women. You can enter both of those into the YouTube algorithm, um, which is the search bar, the YouTube search bar, and began searching. Uh, there are millions of black women, mostly propagated by TikTok. Um, TikTok is a great mechanism to spread ideas faster than the speed of light. There are millions of black women who are actually going on different journeys. It's called the Divest Movement. Um, We are considering other races of men 
for procreation. Um, black women's empowerment. We are in that space not dating the black men. We may go on to other races of men or we just might be single for a while, but we're definitely not procreating with the black men. Black men are now 6% of the American population. Or as my dissertation advisor would say, not American, the United States. What do you mean by America? America could also be South America. No, you live in the United States. Stop putting America throughout your entire paper. So the United States, they are 6%. They are 6 out of every 100 persons in the United States. They're a small portion of the United States. That's still millions of people. So let me look up something real quick. Um, number of black Americans. So in 2021, 47.2 million people in the U.S. identified as black in 2020. One. So, if you divide 47.2 by 2, so, black women, I told, I'm told, are like 7% of the U.S. population, and black men are like 6% of the U.S. population. Black men are 47.2 divided by 2 is 23.6. So that would be half of the black community. Um, black men are a little bit under that because, yeah, they are a little bit under half of the black community. So somewhere between 20 million and 23.6 million. That is... 6% of the American population. That's still a lot of people. That 6%, that 20, approximately 20 million people is driving the entire American conversation. You're only 6% of the population. You're terrible fathers, and you're known to be terrible fathers. And some of you may be listening, oh, they're not, they're not terrible. You had a good father. Did that good father just go about his business and not mentor other young boys in the community because in the white community when they see an issue they take it amongst themselves to mentor the white boy and black boys in their community if they could get access to them without fear of of their own lives being taken They mentor as many boys as they can. They literally do everything in their power as white men to literally make America great. I grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. Seventy percent of our homes have no fathers in them, have no man in them. They say that black women are having multiple kids from the same guy. So you would have one guy, right, 
have multiple babies' mothers. That is a problem in and of itself that we address online here in the Black Women's Empowerment Spaces and the Black Women Divest Spaces. And a lot of Black women are understanding. They, especially after Roe was overturned, they are finally making the decision after seeing the stats on Black men and Roe being overturned. They are finally making the the decision to sit single for a while and just, you know, spend time with God, spend time with family, not be so consumed with men and dating. And it's a good thing. Just give your vagina a rest for a second. (laughs) Spend time speaking to the ancestors, to the spirit, to the Holy Spirit. And just really reassess. I told you about other communities. They mentor Asian, the whites. They'll into, they'll um, mentor the Asian boy, the the white boys, the black boys that are brought to the church that they can safely talk to. They'll mentor anybody because they want a great country. Those child support checks, if your father is not making that much, the child support checks are not that high. And he's not ambitious. He's not out here trying to get a better education to better provide for you. No. Because... He's likely a jailbird or still depressed from being poor. And black men are not known to to seek therapy. They even complain about court-ordered therapy. Black people don't do therapy. Well then, how are you going to get rid of the generational trauma? You need to go to someone that is trained. Not just the pastor at church, because that is a political psyop. He has an agenda. You need to go someone who the Lord gave a talent for uplifting, but they got some schooling behind that talent. They had to go through some tests, some accrediting organizations. And these accrediting organizations said, hey, this person knows how to do their job. And they have proven to me that they know how to do their job according to the according to these proven therapeutic methods. Let somebody who was trained help you, even as black women, sit and discuss your trauma. Um, And, um, excuse me, black men, their karma is immense. Number one, For 70% of our homes, not having a dad in them, number one. Number two, they've cost the American economy more than $50 billion. There's an article out there that says that black men have cost the economy $50 $50 billion. I'm looking up real quick. So the question is, what are they really doing to improve their lives? Because most black women, under the sound of my voice, if you live in the United States, you can't bother your dad for some gas to go up the street. He has a bus ticket or a raggedy car, or 
he has a good job, but so many kids that he can barely afford to to send out child support and don't ask him for gas to go up the street. He doesn't have it. He's in an apartment pushing out most of his check, the child support. And uh, he just did not bother to be a decent human being. For him to be costing the American economy $50 billion a year, he does not have any money. He's also the least educated by race and sex group, and that is including the trades. He is purposely being not only degenerate, but lazy. He's doing this on purpose. I know that's hard for a lot of y'all to understand, but a lot of black men are doing this on purpose. It's a lot of depression going on in our community. I see, yeah. So for the good dads out there, are they just going about their good business? They're not mentoring anybody else. Let's be honest, they're just going about their good business. And then, many of you growing up with your dads, you never really sat down. It's just, y'all are going through day-to-day stuff with dad. You never really sat down and really had, you know, a good conversation with your dad about what he really thinks about Black men, the black community, will he actually admit that there is something wrong with the black American male psyche? Will he admit that to you? And if you actually sit down with him, Most of them will not outright admit it. They will struggle to admit it to you. Not only are they not mentoring other men, other men and boys in the community, they will not admit to you that even when you go to college, black men do their best to get around lighter-skinned women and white women. There's even dating segregation in college so we cannot even hope for the best and then years down the line after you graduate from college you hear that a lot of the women that they've married are now divorced from them less than 10 years after we've all graduated from college and you count it a blessing that those black men You know, that God did not put you near those black men. You check his social media, every one of them. One of them, one of them was a class president of my public Ivy institution. End up being a baby father. And uh, I remember one time, you know, somebody was saying that he and I would make pretty babies. Yeah. He's a he's a nice looking black guy. I I know I, I don't doubt that. But he ended up being a baby father. Lord spared me and a lot of other black women that he could have possibly had, you know, as wives or girlfriends at our university. Uh you know, thank God he didn't choose us. And so, the degeneracy, even among our educated black men, is so deep. 
we've done roundtables on this internet of academics, the black women academics, black women from universities all across this land throughout the decades. Oh, I attended such and such a university in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, 2010s, and the 2020s. Same story. Some of these are people are black university students going to get an education, maybe involved in one student organization, some not involved in a student organization at all, just trying to get a grasp on the education itself. Some of these people are top people at the university. Same story. Just the fact alone that as a dad, the majority of the young women in our community cannot call our fathers up and ask him for a mere $20 to buy, you know, just something that we need is a problem. $20 here, but would be the equivalent of you know, adjusting to cost of living. Dad, I need $20. It would be the equivalent of, you know, Dad, in the Philippines, when are you going to go out and hunt that cow tonight for our dinner? I need dinner for the next, you know, two days, three days, like a cheap dinner. I'm just asking for a cheap dinner that I can feed off of for a few days that us and the family can feed off of for a few days like a pot of rice that we can eat for two or three days I don't have it I don't have it amount of money yet the father in the Philippines Every morning, he's living in the home. He's living in the shack with you. Our fathers have never lived with us. He's living in the shack with you, doing whatever he can to even patch up the holes in the shack, getting up every morning to find out how to get food for you. He doesn't care if he has to kill an animal. He doesn't care if you have to go ask a neighbor you are going to have food at the end of the day. How many of our black fathers say, I don't have it, I can't get it, the white man, but dad, I don't have what I need. I don't have the basis. And then some of our fathers say, well, go get it. You go get it. I don't have it. You go get it. Ask your mama, you can't even pick up the phone. Then you got a poor man in the Philippines that will do it every day. You got men in England that will do it every day. Now, throughout history, of course, you've had pockets of larger group of men be terrible dads. Like, Right now, you have some Chinese men impregnating black women in Africa and getting up and, and leaving and not taking care of the child. You have a few. You have some white men who have did that throughout the world, throughout history. But while, impreg while those white men were impregnating black women in the islands and in Africa, you had a lot of them, a lot actually during colonial times leave their wealth to these black women and their have black children. There's a lot of things that you don't know and, um, about world history. And um, I just want you all to understand, you know, women who are still in shock. I don't know how to say it clearer. 
The black man is 6% of the American population. I predict in recent years, you know, in years to come, that's going to vastly drop to 3% of the American population and go from like 20 million to like 10 million. And it's coming because their karma is going to be swift for never having money to provide the basics for you or adjusted to American inflation, for not getting up and hustling like that dad in the Philippines to find the money to cover your basics, for costing the American economy $50 billion a year. So, their karma is, they got more karma on them coming to them than the poorest man in Latin America. Because that poor man is more than likely taking care of his kids. Living in poverty. Oh, he's going to do his best to find something. He don't care if he has to dig in a trash. I've seen Latin men in Los Angeles digging in trash cans in the middle of the night because it's Los Angeles. People are wealthy. They'll throw away whole dinners because the food was too cold. I mean, literally, the perfectly apples because, oh, I decided I didn't want an apple today. You'll find food, so like meals, like literally. So I see literally people you know, Latin men and white men, like, in the middle of not digging up trash. Oh, it, it, they going to find it somewhere. Because, you know, poverty, you know, is really going up in this country. They're going to find it somewhere. A black man, <laughs> I'm telling you, having a child with a black man, is they're costing the economy. They don't take care of their children. Black women, because of Roe, are finally closing their legs. Black men are 6% of the population. It's going to drop to 3% very quickly. And I can't, I'm not going to say they deserve it. I'm not going to say that they, not, that they do not des, um, deserve it. But read between the lines. Um, you can't continue to not have confidence in yourself, not seek help, pass that that lack of confidence and self hate, and on to successive generations, and then start to cost other races of people money. Because you can't get yourself together and there not be consequences for that. I don't care how many people online are speaking about, oh, here they go, Jonathan Majors again, on the black man's tail because one thing we do as black men and it's over. The black American man in general. I have black men in Africa that will go fetch a hog, fetch a pig, try to cut a deal at the market. I have a friend right now who in in Africa, um, hard times in Nigeria, these businesses, you know, new administration, new presidential administration, and these businesses are not, some of them are not helping entrepreneurs in certain industries right now. They're waiting to see how the new presidential administration treats certain industries before they um, deal with extraneous, you know, 
services, um, such as home repair, clothing, you know, different talents like that. A lot of people aren't spending their money right now until the new administration comes in. So my friend's business is like really struggling over there in Nigeria. And this man is out here. He loves his daughter and his wife. He, this man is out here hustling, knocking on doors like, do you need this or that? And this is not like street vendor business. Like he has a legitimate business. I don't want to say in the industry, but like he has a thriving business and it just like fell to the ground like a lot of business here in America during COVID. And it's just like, wow, it went from really successful to just, and he's out here hustling. Like I got kids to feed, they need a roof and uh, praying for him and his wife every day. And um, black American man, no, 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 did not, <laughs> no, no, um, no, and, um, uh, Yeah. Stay away. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think a lot of you understand what era we are in. Your vagina should literally be nowhere near a black man. The in America, the karma that they have coming to them whether they committed crimes or not. It's so extensive, fast, and swift that you don't want to be in the way because you will get caught up. You can't do all of that and not have karma come your way. I don't even care if you're attracted to the black man. The fact that they have done so much damage. Whoever does not. No. The Bible, the Bible verse says. Whoever cares for the least of these. Is the most in heaven. The other Bible verse says that. The person who the man or the person who does not provide for their family is worse than an infidel if you're costing the american economy 50 billion dollars a year if you're not providing for the family you're also not providing for yourself you're literally worse than an infidel and if that is the regular occurrence in the community the karma coming to them from Jesus, from the ancestors, is going to be so swift, you should not have your vagina anywhere near a black man. That's all I got to say. Because you will be swept up in his karma. Let me see. Um, I was going to look up one more stat. I don't know how to say it clearer to you. I don't even care if you're attracted to him. The answer is no. You better ask God to give you another attraction. That's all I got to say. Um, I was looking up something real quick. Uh, but anyway, if I think about it, I'll put it down below. But many of you have already heard this lecture, lecture many a times. But the Jonathan Majors situation is bringing a lot of new people to the internet. And millions of black women are waking up for the first time like, dog, if I marry the, dude, the black dude from Yale, that's still going to give me some grief. Yeah, we tried to tell you, but you're holding on to black love. 
they have too much karma coming their way for me to even entertain it. 